Hello, welcome to the latest installment of Roy's Book Reviews. Spring is here, it's in the air. Um, you know what that means. It means a bunch of stuff, actually. It means allergies may be acting up. It means it's, um, as you can see from my hat, it's tennis season. I'm a huge tennis fan. I have a huge tennis ball. <laughs> um, an expression that goes along with Spring is springtime in Paris. So today I am going to review the novel The Paris Bookseller by Carrie Maher. Um, it's just a total coincidence, actually. It just happens to be the uh, most recent book I read. And um, let me get into it. The Paris Bookseller is a work of historical fiction centered on the life of Sylvia Beach. If you don't already know, in 1919, Sylvia Beach founded the original Shakespeare and Company bookstore in Paris, France. The bookshop of this name that some of you may have visited in more recent years opened in 1951 and repurposed the name of Beach's iconic store as tribute in 1964. If like myself, you are endlessly fascinated with the artists of the lost generation, then you want to add Kerry Maher's lovingly researched novel to your book pile. To quote Wikipedia, rather than trying to put it into my own words, The Lost Generation was the social generational cohort that was in early adulthood during World War I. Lost, in this context, refers to the disoriented, wandering, directionless spirit of many of the war survivors in the early post-war period. The term is also particularly used to refer to a group of American expatriate writers living in Paris during the 1920s. Gertrude, Gertrude Stein is credited with coining the term, and it was subsequently popularized by Ernest Hemingway, who used it in the epigraph for his 1926 novel, The Sun Also Rises. You are all a lost generation, he wrote. Well said, Wikipedia. Um, among the notable figures of this period who populate the pages of the Paris bookseller, along with Hemingway and his alternating romantic partners, um, are Gertrude Stein, who I mentioned, F. Scott Fitzgerald, and Zelda Fitzgerald, T.S. Eliot, Ezra Pound, John Dos Passos, Sherwood Anderson, Ford Maddox Ford, and most prominently, James Joyce. Along with the Lost Generation writers, let me not leave off painters name dropped in the Paris bookseller who came to prominence during this period, such as Matisse and Picasso. Authors like Henry Miller, William Faulkner, and Virginia Woolf are also mentioned in passing, even if they didn't happen to be among the American expatriates who felt stifled by the conservative attitudes of America, and so came to Paris, where for a time they could live their best lives and produce their best art, and spend plenty of time hanging out at the hippest uh, bookstore on the planet. Contrast prohibition taking place in America with uh, drinking wine or perhaps even a sip of absinthe in France, such as the uh, Louis Generation. Um, members were doing. Another prominent figure of this time and in this novel um, and in the life of Sylvia Beach um, is her longtime romantic partner, Adrienne Monnier. Before there was a Shakespeare and Company, Adrienne was a trailblazing businesswoman who opened the bookshop and lending library, La Maison des Amis des Livres. Hopefully um, my French... Um, was pretty good there. We'll see. Um, Shakespeare and Company would eventually move across the street from Adrian's, and with Adrian's shop providing books written in French, while Sylvia's shop serviced those in search of English language books. As with Adrian's shop, Shakespeare and Company served as a lending library along with having books to sell. If you seek books about notable women in history who enhance the cause of feminism, the Paris bookseller will scratch that itch. The same can be said if you are interested in stories about notable lesbians, 
Uh, Paris in the 1920s was more liberal than America when it came to living and let live in this regard as well. Um, the talk of the U.S. Supreme Court taking away the reproductive rights of American women here in 2022, once again, American conservative conservatism rears its head. Uh, with war being waged on Ukraine by Russia, uh, one wonders if this conflict will spill to other lands and how many casualties and tortured aftermaths will result, uh, much as uh, World War I uh, affected uh, many young men. Will we soon have a new, a new lost generation in search of a new nirvana to escape to, such as they did in the 20s um, when they flocked to Paris? History does love to repeat itself. Adrienne and Sylvia, plus Gertrude Stein, are women well worth knowing more about. And you may care to check out um, a review that I did here um, not too long ago um, of the novel Z, a novel of Zelda Fitzgerald by Therese Ann Fowler. Um, Therese, um, Zelda, rather, is, is mentioned in passing in the Paris bookseller. Um, but the Paris bookseller focuses primarily on the life of Sylvia Beach. Uh, that life was dominated by the presence of Adrienne Monnier, um, the woman she loved for um, several decades, and perhaps even more so by one of the writers I mentioned earlier, uh, James Joyce. While a woman opening an English language bookshop, or any kind of bookshop, or any kind of business in Paris... Um, was a pretty big deal in 1919, the event that put Shakespeare and company on the literary map uh, for all time was Sylvia Beach's decision to publish James Joyce's controversial novel, Ulysses, which she did in 1922. Considered obscene by those who couldn't look past its strong language uh, to appreciate the novelty and beauty of its prose, Ulysses needed someone brave and resourceful enough to bring it to the light of day. Someone who didn't see it as um, book pornography, but as a um, brilliant work of writing uh, that it is. Um, by publishing the one and only book under the bookstore's imprint, the course of literary history was altered. We readers have a comfortable window seat view of the coolest place to be, during one of the mo most artistically influential periods in history, courtesy of Carrie Maher's steady-handed prose. There isn't much in the way of tension until the latter section of the Paris bookseller, when multiple editions of Ulysses have been um, published by this point, and it looks as if America um, is finally um, open to embracing it. Uh, for the book to become available worldwide, it needs a major publisher, behind it, such as Random House, run at the time by Bennett Cerf. Uh, James Joyce is anxious for this to happen, uh, whereas Sylvia Beach is loath to relinquish control of the work that she dedicated so much time and effort to birthing when nobody else was willing to touch it with a 10-foot pole. The warmth of their personal relationship is greatly tested as Joyce intensifies his badgering over the fate of a book that means the world to both of them. As the author, Ulysses is James Joyce's baby. As the publisher, Ulysses is Sylvia Beach's baby. Something and someone has to give. I know I'm not the only one with a weakness for stories about writers and the writing process. The publishing process is a related endeavor, of course, one that at times can resemble a battlefield. If these are areas of interest to you as well, uh, the Paris bookseller will be right up your alley. If you could care less about this sort of stuff, perhaps preferring steamy romances or out-of-this-world science fiction or edge-of-you-seat thrillers or terrifying tales of horror featuring paranormal beings or inhuman humans, then you may find the Paris bookseller to be insufficiently eventful, and I wouldn't stare you towards it. You have been uh, duly warned. Um, but if you're like the character played by Owen Wilson in Woody Allen's cinematic gem, Midnight in Paris, 
looking to escape into days of yesteryear where the person in the cafe um, seat to your right is destined for immortality, as is the person to your immediate left, um, then I encourage you to dive into the world of Harry Mayher's The Paris Bookseller. Now that I'm done, done with it, I'm itching to read uh, Ernest Hemingway's A Movable Feast for a real-life, non-fictionalized take on Paris in the 1920s. Or perhaps a reread of my favorite Hemingway novel, The Sun Also Rises, is in order. If not, my um, very next read, uh, then soon enough, um, I will be getting to it. I have a few other titles in my always growing to be read um, pile to get to. Um, but until then, um, I wish you, as always, happy reading. I encourage you to leave comments um, down below. Um, and I really encourage you, if you haven't already, to subscribe to the channel so you'll get, you'll get notifications um, as soon as I drop uh, new videos. Um, until um, the next time, happy reading. And if you want to play tennis... Just let me know.